the, one of the key consequences of the spectral theorem is that it allows us to define different types of inner products for any Hermitian matrix. So if A satisfies uh, A equals A star, A is a Hermitian matrix, then define, let's call the inner product of V and W sub A as V star A W. Note that our traditional inner product, VW, is really VW I, and certainly the identity is a Hermitian matrix. So why is it that I should call this an inner product? Why is this a reasonable operation to do? Well, the thing is that it satisfies the key properties that we want an inner product to have. First of all, it's certainly multilinear. Since it's based on matrix multiplication, if I say scale V or W, the result scales appropriately. If I say V1 plus V2 and uh, insert that here, or v W1 plus W2, um, I can distribute it as appropriate. And it satisfies this key property, that V W A is W V A up to conjugation. Here's a quick proof of that. V star AW is a complex number, and for a complex number, taking a conjugate is the same thing as taking a star, if I think as a one by one matrix. So that's W star, A star, V star star. And that of course is W star, A star is equal to A, and V star star is V. And we're done. To gain, to gain some intuition about this inner product VWA, this is where the spectral theorem comes in. So because A can be written as a, a real diagonal matrix altered by a unitary change of basis, that means we can write the following. At first this looks just like some algebraic manipulations. But when we come to the end, you'll see that it's really a, a very geometric statement. In other words, if I want to take the bracket VW with respect to A, I can compute it this way. In some orthogonal basis U, I am essentially taking the standard Hermitian product of V and W in that new basis. But I'm stretching the different directions by different factors, lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n. In other words, if we choose all the lambdas to be 1 and have u be the standard orthogonal basis, then this is the standard inner product. However, if I choose some other lambdas and some other orthogonal basis, I get another notion of an inner product. The only condition you might want to have is that you might, you might insist that lambda 1 up to lambda n are all positive. Remember, the spectral theorem guarantees that they are already real, so we don't have to worry about having imaginary answers here. But you might want to insist that they're all positive. In, this, in that case, we call this positive definite. Our Hermitian matrix is called positive definite if all of its eigenvalues are strictly positive. The word positive definite is a little strange. Um, it's sort of a historical artifact. If for instance, if all the eigenvalues were uh, greater than or equal to zero, it's sometimes called positive indefinite. So it's like, these are definitely positive, or they are uh, indefinite would mean non-negative. Right? So it's kind of a strange terminology, but that's the terminology that's stuck. So the point is that what this format allows us to do with the spectral theorem is say, choose any orthogonal basis you like, 
and choose any sort of scaling factors in those directions, and you get a new inner product corresponding with that choice. And each such choice is really saying use a Hermitian matrix. I made a glib comment in the previous video about how general relativity depends on the spectral theorem, and I want to take a, just a moment to explain what I mean by that. The key idea behind Einstein's theory of general relativity is that we have two ideas, that mass and energy bend space, or actually bend space-time, but I'll say space for now, and space tells objects how to move. So the second one is really what I want to focus on. What do we mean when we say space tells objects how to move? Well, at any given location, you can think about an orthogonal frame of reference and say, say, how far away are two points near here? And you use the notion of a norm. So our notion of measurement of how far away things are and how long it takes to get somewhere and how fast we're going, all those ideas come from the inner product at a point. Now, the thing we know about the universe is that it's not the same at every point. We have the notion of gravity is stronger in some places versus other places, and we want to express that as a geometric idea. So if we sort of take a picture of a, a section of the universe with different masses and energies flowing around here, you want to say at this point, this is what geometry looks like. And if you're working near that point, then you may as well be working in a little copy of Euclidean plane. And over here, there's another notion of geometry. And here, there's another notion of geometry. So what we need to do is say for each position, P in space, there is a um, geometry there. And each geometry is essentially the same in the sense that it looks like Euclidean geometry at that point. However, that geometry can vary from place to place. If you, in, at some locations, it's easier to move one direction versus a different direction. And the notion of which direction is biased, say, which direction is attractive due to gravity um, versus moving across the gravitational field lines, that can vary from place to place. So what we need is a Hermitian, or actually, since we're working with the real numbers here, a, a symmetric matrix at every point. And we call this G of P. So P is the point you're sitting at. This is P. And nearby P, there's a matrix G, a symmetric matrix, which we consider the geometry given by VW defined by G. And G is called the metric. So what the spectral theorem shows us is that if, if you can define at every point a symmetric matrix, a positive definite symmetric matrix in fact, then at every point in space, if you use a basis at that point, then in the correct orthogonal basis at that point, you may as well be working in the traditional Euclidean metric. And this is why, say, if you're standing in one spot, you can't really tell that you're living in a wobbly, stretchy universe. However, if you look across very different positions and compare them back and forth, you realize that the way you measure things over here is different than the way you measure things over there. And that's saying that our notion of geometry, even though at each point it looks like Euclidean space, can vary from place to place. And the spectral theorem allows us to do this. So again, the idea is we have, in fact, a function from space. So g is a function. from space to the space of symmetric matrices. And G of P gives you the geometry at point P. Using the inner product defined by that particular metric G. 
Now, of course, this is a course in scientific computing, not a course in general relativity. But this idea of adapting the geometry to the point or to the situation using a rotation and, use, and then analyzing how much things are stretched in different directions, this is going to be a key of a lot of computational um, maneuvers. And it just so happens it's also the fundamental fact that lets our universe make sense mathematically in terms of geometry and gravity.